I'm Bobby J. Welcome back to the channel. Today I got a couple loads to haul. First thing is, is I've got this big tank. This is going to be a big water storage tank. I need to go and take it out to one of the orchards, prepare a spot in the dirt for it, smooth it all out, which is why the old uh, Boop Cat 843 is loaded up. Switch to the forks, unload that tank, spot it, get it all set, load back up with the Bobcat, and then I got to book it to the local case dealership and pick up a tractor, my orchard tractor that is now fixed on the, took a new def sending unit. If you tuned into the last video. So you're gonna hit the road, gotta make moves count. I am going loaded in both directions for the most part. Try to maximize mileage. So I've been kind of looking for a big storage tank now for a while um, because I haul so much water throughout the growing season, so much water. I mean, half of the weight that I probably haul um, in a 12 month period is good old H2O. Um, and one issue of that is, is the fact that I don't have a good water source at a couple of different uh, rural, area, rural areas uh, where I farm. So again like i said i've been looking for one of these big tanks and the right one popped up so i went to grab it it was up north further north in the state and kind of up in the uh, lower mountains upper foothills whatever you want to call it sure picked a heck of a day one of the lowest uh <clears throat> snowstorms of the year and it was a big one up at the higher elevations it was a full-on blizzard it's been on the news and everything but uh where there shouldn't have been snow normally, I was in snow and barely got out of there. The time I was getting out of it, the roads were covered in white and was able to get drop down a couple hundred feet and get out of the snow line. But anyway, got this sucker picked up. So I'm gonna go spot this tank where it needs to go. And uh, this is gonna be real handy because I can fill this up with water. When I'm not busy, I can either haul water out to it and store water in it for when I am busy, it's there. And I can also, um, during irrigation season, I can fill it up with filtered water from uh, one of the irrigation pumps. So that's also handy because that's darn near free. Um, so I'm gonna head out there, drop this thing off, then head to the dealership, go grab that tractor and come home. It's Friday evening. Good dealer support, I tell you, it, it, it's important. Times you don't even think, you can't even think of. I mean, here I got stuck in a town over, I'm pushing trying to get there to the dealer before five o'clock. I get stuck behind some accident or whatever and, and I'm plugged up. I called them and I said, hey, I'm coming. And they said, no problem, we'll wait for you. We'll make sure you get your tractor picked up. And I said, well, I sure appreciate that. And so, appreciate it, NNS. Um, you know, I'm all loaded up and see what do we got here? 6,500 on the Bobcat, 11 on the tractor, seven on the trailer. So, you know, we're 18, we're about 24, five, maybe even 25,000 back there. Buying plus the truck, that's 11. So yeah, 36,000 pounds, pretty heavy. And my trailer, that's probably about all I want to put on there. I got a pair of 10,000 pounders. So 
I'm probably pushing hopefully a good 4,000 pounds on the pin weight. But, you know, when you do have a lot of equipment to move and everything, trying to make your moves count is, is important, especially with this fuel. While fuel has receded some, it's not down nearly what it was, you know, a year and a half ago. So it's important to, you know, maximize your miles and maximize your moves. You know, I went from point A to point B with a load, with the tank, with a mission there. You know, mission number one to get that tank offloaded and put in position. And then from point B to point C wasn't that far. And then scoot the bobcat forward, grab load number two or mission number two get the orchard tractor picked up from the dealer and then from there headed home loaded um to destination d so like i said you know try to think is is when you're you know you're trying to decide of you know what you got multiple things going on try to make your miles count the best you can because you know in time fuel wear and tear everything it counts because you know in the commercial world staying loaded means you're making money now like me i'm not for hire this is all my own stuff my own deal you know internal internal moves how about that uh, you know but still though it still counts i mean the bottom line is is it costs me money to go down the road with an empty trailer with nothing on it so try to stay on the move loaded as much as possible Well, there's the weights right there coming across the scale. Now, you know, the scale rocks a little bit when you're moving. Come doing, coming to a stop with just a truck, I'm 16,060 pounds. But as you can see, that's pretty accurate on the front axle of 5240. Basically, what that puts me at is approximately 10,800 pounds on the rear axle, which is over about 1,000 pounds. So this is the issue that I was a little bit concerned about um, regarding having going with the 3500 chassis cab truck. Now, if I was a 4500, this wouldn't be an issue and I would have approximately a thousand pounds in reserve still yet. And I'm now don't get me wrong, I'm not concerned about this at all. I'm not concerned being a thousand pounds over on that rear axle. I do think that that's a conservative number. I also think 12,000 pounds for the 4500 is also a conservative number for the size of that axle. But you know, tire ratings, tire ratings could hold that 11,000 pounds. Um, but here's the issue is as you can see, then that's basically there's no room for some growth here and like i said what i was concerned about was i keep stuffing more and more tools in that badass bed and that's where this is a little tricky is trying to have a truck a do-all truck where you've got you know lots of tool storage fuel storage all those kinds of things that you can see on my 22 but also having good carrying capacity. That's probably where maybe I made a boo-boo and probably should have went with a 4500, but doesn't matter at this point. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm okay with this. I'm okay, I'm not going across scales. I'm all in rural areas and everything. Tire ratings are there. I honestly think that that is not a big issue for that size of that rear axle, a 12 inch rear axle that's found underneath the HO trucks. Um, but yeah, there's no room for growth here. So, you know, with the little 843 Bobcat, uh, it weighs like 6,500 pounds approximately. And looking at the teleskid, I mean, my ideal setup would be able to be able to put the tell well actually no because that tractor is lighter than the teleskid to be able to put that tractor up here in the front and have the teleskid on the back now you say yeah but you're just talking about a few minutes ago in the vid about how you're running max on this trailer there is another trailer 
in the works. Uh, you know, we built this one. Um, my dad and I designed this trailer. I basically did, you know, the majority of the construction, all the wiring, paint, all the, all that stuff. Um, and, and so that's kind of our thing is building our own trailers and in the works is building a hydraulic dovetail, um, and going with, I'm pretty sure with 16,000 pound, um, either lipperts or 15,000 pound dexters, whatever, whatever's the best price. Uh, with hydraulic disc brakes, all that good stuff. And that will be a heavy son of a gun. And it will be, it will be, it will have engineered beams in it. I got to trick up my sleeve for that one right there. So we're going to have an arch in that trailer like new school. Um, so that trailer though, when that trailer gets built, it would be able to handle that 23,000 pound, 24,000 pound capacity of the Case 120C with the Orchard Special Package, huh? Um, and that big bad teleskid. Now, that's the problem there, is not enough truck. I'll have enough trailer, I'll have plenty of cargo, but not enough truck. Not too sure what to do. That trailer is going to be about 32, 33 feet. This is a 30 footer, obviously 25 plus five. These, that's the thing with the beaver tail on the ramps is that's basically dead footage back there in the back. You know, that's kind of the question I'm wondering, you know, can I shift that load rearward a little ways to be able to make, you know, try to get some of the tongue weight off of the truck? I don't know. Some of that is, is won't find, be able to find out until you know, got everything in my hands and started loading stuff and putting it on the scale. But so there it is. There is the limitations, the max reach, finding the max ability on paper anyway of the chassis cab 3500. Now, as far as, you know, like I said, you saw this rig raise about 35,000 with me sitting in it. Actually, I think it said exactly 35,000 with me sitting in it. No problem. Now, you know, I'm in flatland country. Hill mountains are a different deal, but no problems. I mean, I felt like I weighed, I felt like I had 15,000 behind me in, in, in my 04. It's amazing how this, again, is preaching to the choir to some of you guys that have these and, and beating a dead horse. I've said it in other videos. It's amazing how well these trucks can handle the weight. But, um, so that's going to be the trick is where to find some growing room. Here with this setup is inevitably my equipment and loads and everything continue to get heavier and heavier i hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe we'll see you on the next one